Hi Greedy 3D is welcome to today's episode. Before Marvel penned paper for the first time with Spider-Woman, Spider-Man or any other incarnation of Spider-Man, Japanese folk legend had it with the Joragumo, roughly translated into horse spider. The Joragumo was a half woman, half spider, half beautiful woman who lured men with her beauty and elegance and then captured them in her big spider tentacles and web and had them for her own uses. Uh, basically, she ate them and she ate their children and wrapped them up in web, etc. Well, today we're going to be making this Joragumo, which I got from C. A sculpts. It is a beautiful, beautiful sculpt. And uh, I hope you like the making process today. I hope you really enjoy the making of this one. It's one of my favourites. I know I say that a lot, but this one is definitely one of my favourites. So make sure you stay tuned for the making of the Joragumo. I've printed the Joragumo model across two printers, starting off with the Hay Gears Ultracraft Reflex. I've got to be honest, really love this printer. Make sure you check my review for it because there are a couple of flaws, but the quality of the printer is absolutely beautiful and has done a great job. I've also printed on my fave printer, my bestie, the Uniformation GK2, and for this I've used some Jam J Standard Pro resin, which again is a fantastic resin. If you want to get hold of a printer or the resin, there of course will be a link in the description on the high gears I did print with their very own PAP 10 resin and here is Joragumo all printed out and ready to go and for the skin tones on her I'm going to use some barbarian flesh on top of a black primer and I'm just going to give her a coat all over as I normally do making sure that I get all the areas covered um, skin tones are one of those things that um, there's lots of different ways of doing it this is just my way of doing it I may start to experiment with skin tones to try to get more of a reddish color underneath or a pinkish color underneath but for this one I'm quite happy with how that even tone looks and I'm going to do some work on the top there's her feet I can't wait to paint those claws as well wonderful now for the other coat I'm using some basic Vallejo skin colour here and I've watered it down 75% thinner to paint and I'm just giving it a very very light coat across the top just to even that skin tone up a little bit. I just want her to look a little bit brighter in certain places and then I'm going to use some of this Vallejo pink colour and again I'm going to dilute this down 75 to 25 percent but obviously do that until it fits correctly in your airbrush you just want it like a milk consistency really and I'm going to touch over certain area of her with this pink again to give a little bit of colour and a little bit of striation in her same again with all the rest of the skin tones I'm not going to show you everything but all the skin tones had exactly the same and that's her out in the sunshine with a nice green bush in the background I think you'll agree that skin tone looks okay I'm chuffed with that the back of it I used a bit of leather brown just dry brushed on just to give those clawy bits a look and there's her feet there's the legs um, I'm going to do a bit more work on those just add a bit more coloration to them and some washes but that's them for now there's that hand holding the end of the brolly that she's got and everything I've done all the skin tones going to be protected with this rust-oleum clear it's really important before the next stage you protect your skin tones because we're going to do some washes and we don't want to damage the skin tone after all that work that we have put in now I'm going to use some Vallejo liquid mask here to just protect the legs because I'm going to do a little bit more work on painting the um, the costume the um, the dress the frock that she's wearing and I want to protect those skin tones so I'm putting a bit of that liquid mask on there and um, don't be afraid of liquid mask I've done a whole video on how to use it which I'll put a link in the end and I'm going to use some gemstone from the army painter I want to make her costume I want to make her frock look really really silky and this is a fantastic colour for that i um, giving it a coat right the way across I'm letting some of the black come through to allow some shadowing but on the whole I'm not going to put any shading on this as such uh, I'm going to do a wash at the end of it all but I want some of the black to come through as a little bit of shading and this is a wonderful wonderful colour for that here, exactly the same thing on the lower 
part of her body. I've got to say, CA Sculpts has done an incredible design on this, and I'll put a link in the description where you can get this from, but it is one of those beautiful models that you just have to have. And if you like spiders and you like nice uh, models, you're going to love this one. Skeleton Bone is what I'm going to use next, and I'm going to do her brolly, her umbrella, her parasol, and I'm just going to give that a little bit of a light coating all over. Now, I'm going to do a bit more work on this at the end because I want it to look a bit old and aged because I don't think it would look pristine. Uh, this is the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch for the base. Just wanted to make the base nice and easy and nice and bright and I've popped that on. And there we go, that's with the liquid mask now taken off. A little bit of touching up to do as you can see but on the whole you get the gist of what is going on there. We've got to do a bit more work on those legs. Now I've masked everything off because I want to put another layer on her costume. So masked everything off and then I'm going to take a nice gold colour gritty gold and I'm going to put that across the areas that I have not masked to give a little bit of striation and variation in the colouring of her frock. Same again on the bottom part of course. Lots of masking tape was used in the process of this and make sure on the edges of the masking tape you pushed it down really hard so you don't get any of the gold running through underneath. You could also use something like blue tack. You could use the liquid mask if you wanted to but for me this was the best and most appropriate approach and it has worked really well. That's what it looks like now with everything taken out. There might be a couple of areas that need touching up but you're always going to get that. But there we go, there's her costume looking lovely I think looking really posh there's the bottom part oh it just looks beautiful doesn't it i think the dress is really important to get right on this model and to make it look really bright and shiny she's supposed to be lure men so let's give her something to do that with now just back to the skin tones and i'm using this wash here this is a vallejo a transparent yellow and you've seen me do this a myriad of times just brushing it all the way across the skin tones to add that yellow uh, striation all over it and once it's on there before it has time to settle and set in i'm taking a kitchen roll and i'm dabbing it off and i'll use an earbud or a q-tip to get into the areas that i cannot normally get into before doing exactly the same at this time with a rougey red, transparent red, again from Vallejo Wash. This is, um, I would say this is probably about 80% water i haven't used thinner water to 20 percent paint just to get it on there and get it off again just to add a, a gentle hue of red there's the face and the top part of the body all done now just to talk you through what i've done as i didn't catch it all on video face i've done the way i normally do faces black eyes then the white at the pupils she's going to be looking to the left so i've painted the iris is looking to the left um, i've used some skeleton bone color just to make these parts of her hair stick out a little bit there and around the back this part here I've just added a little bit of a red colour across the bow skeleton bone on the edge bits there and I've just dry brushed some silver over the other bits just to make it look a little bit more interesting on the eye. For the hair obviously use some black that was a bit of a tricky bit to get the hair over her shoulders and on the sort of jowl bits for the spider give them a base of skeleton bone and then I went over them with some pallid bone speed paint to colour them up a little bit. Um, put a little bit of blood in the join just to make it look like it's, well, just to like, look like they're a little bit more menacing. And you can see there's a split down her face there. So I put a little bit of red in there as well, just to make that look um, like it is supposed to be there, which it is, because I, I guess she opens her mouth again. Uh, that's the concept of that. Um, painted the spider eyes black and I gave the eyes and the spider eyes some Vallejo liquid um, gloss. And I'm going to call her done, Ooh, apart from, for the spider bit at the back, I gave her some brown and then I used some of that pally bone again just to go all over that to give it a, a kind of shaded look just to make it look a little bit more interesting. And that's that part done. So I'm going to start finishing off the body now. So with the main parts of the body, all I've done here really is painted the little emblemy bits there, the little decorative bits silver, and I've painted the tassels white and I've used a little bit of a dark shade on them, a wash to colour them up a little bit. And I've put a wash also all across the gold, again, just to age all that up. And I've done exactly the same with the top part of a body. As you can see, the gold is is a little bit more tarnished and aged and that's what I wanted it to look like. Again, the little decorative bits of had a silver done and painted her hair in with a little gold braid and that's the body pretty much done and dusted.
For her hand, uh, she's holding a mask, so I've just painted the mask with a little bit of white. Um, well, it's not actually white, it's ivory, just on the front and back. On her nails, I've painted them skeleton bone and then gone over them with some pallid bone speed paint as well, just to make them look a bit more menacing. And I've done exactly the same to this part of her hand, giving her nails a little bit of, uh, a little bit of texture with that pallid bone over skeleton bone. And that's pretty much that done as well. The umbrella bit, um, I didn't want this to look shiny and new, so I've just aged it up using some washes and a few different colours. I don't think it would look new and pristine, so that has all been aged nicely, and I'm quite pleased with how that's come out. And I've just used a bit of a wood colour brown on the handle itself, and I'm gonna pretty much call that done. That's not a big part of the build. I might just paint the end of it uh, a little bit of a wood colour, but that's, that's pretty much done. Now for the base, um, you can see there's loads of little spiders on that and I'm, I'm, I don't want to get them covered with anything because I want to just be able to paint them fairly quickly and they're already black and I want to leave them black really. So I'm going to do some dry brushing around these parts and for that I'm just going to give it a coat initially of some uniform grey on a dry brush. So let's do that firstly. I'm just going to use a, a medium dry brush and a small dry brush just so I don't put any more than I need to on it. And of course, usual technique, get some of that uh, grey on your brush. Get it off with some paper, some kitchen towels when the majority is off. And then I'm just going to dry brush it across. Trying, of course, to avoid the spiders. Now there's going to be a couple of spiders that you're going to catch, so you're going to have to do a little bit of touching up on those, which is fine, no drama there. And if you've got any of the spiders, just a touch up, that's all that's needed. I'm going to let that dry, and I'm going to probably dry brush a little over the spiders too just with a little brown, just to make them stick out a little bit too. I thought just to liven up the base just a little bit, I'd just paint some red markings on the back of the spiders, nothing too specific, but just a line with some crosses across it. Just again, just to make them look a little bit more interesting really. Nothing too drastic, you know, really nothing too drastic, but just something to make you look, uh, uh, notice maybe that there's something else going on with those spiders, just a little something else. Uh, and that's all it is. I don't think you need to go over the top with it. If you want to go over the top with it and paint each individual one, uh, you can, of course, but um, that's not going to be what I'm doing today. I'm just going to give them a little bit of a mark. And if it's a bit too stark, I'll just wipe it off. Again, just to add a little bit of... Uh, coloration I guess. I'm just going to take some of this, um, this is streaking grime from AK and in certain areas I'm just going to put a little bit of this on and it kind of, uh, it looks like a little greeny colour, you know, maybe it would just sit in the background. Of where the rocks join. Again, just to make it look might be just a little bit interesting on the eye. It looks a bit stark. I'm just going to dab it with a bit of kitchen towel just to take away any of the stronger edges. Just to add that coloration in. I think to make something really nice to look at, you don't, it's not hard work. You just need to know a few of the tricks of the trade. There you go, as the base goes, that's fairly easy to do. Looks pretty good, happy with that. One last thing to do, I'm going to take a brighter colour, I'm going to use some of this stone golem, and just going to take my dry brush again, and I'm literally just going to go over some of the real strong edges. Don't want to go over all of it, 
just some of the edges to make it look like there's a little bit more colour variation in it. I'm not going to call that uh, done and dusted. There we go. One easy peasy rocks with spiders on base. So with the spider legs themselves, what I thought I would do is just give them a dry brush with a little bit of leather brown, just to add a touch of colorization to them. So let's do that. Getting a nice big dry brush. I don't want them to be, I don't want them to be too covered in brown, but I do want them to have an element of the brown on them. So get it on, get it off. And literally, I'm just going to add a little bit of a brown striation across it. Nothing too drastic. I'm going to do the same for all of them. And I think the claws to these are going to have to be claw coloured so I'm going to use some skeleton bone I'm pretty similar to what I did to the teeth really so just take a little bit of skeleton bone and drag it down it's not going to be the last colour we put on it but it will do for now so again on all the claws on all of the spider legs let's just get that colour on apart from the one that hasn't got a claw, which is not supposed to have a claw. Okay, the other thing I wanted to do with the spider legs was, I just feel they need a little bit of dry brush yellow in the center of them. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of a demonic yellow, I'm gonna take another dry brush. And in the kind of center of them, I just wanna give them a your real light yellow coat across. Did think of airbrushing it on, but let's see what the uh, dry brushing looks like in the centre part of it. Here we go, that's what the leg looks like with a bit of dry brushing on, a little bit of skeleton bone on there, and I am going to now just add a little bit of pallet bone speed paint on the end and those legs will be done. There you go, that's the legs all done. I'm just going to add, well, I'm just going to glue them on there and then they're finished. So all done and dusted. Thank you 
greedy 3 Ds. thank you for your support i just want to take this moment to thank my patreons because come on let's be honest without my patreons it would be a lot more difficult to do what i'm doing week in week out without the support of the followers of greedy 3d and we're just over five and a quarter thousand so that is an amazing figure and i'm so so pleased thank you so so much if you want to support the channel you can do so in a number of ways please subscribe to the channel it's free it's simple it's just one click and that subscription means the world to me if you want to join the greedy three patreon you can from as little as zero to as much as a couple of quid just to support the channel to keep these lights a burning my eyes and if you want to buy anything from the uh, links below a little bit will kick back to the channel as an affiliate link if you buy a printer if you buy a bit of paint if you buy anything a little bit just kicks back and it helps me just carry on doing this hope you've enjoyed that today greedy 3d is and i will see you next time please make sure you leave a comment below that really does help the youtube algorithm even if it's just a comment to say um hi greedy 3d whatever you want to put in there it really does help the algorithm like it leave a comment share it with your friends and i'll see you real real soon next time on greedy 3d mm -hmm.